Hey everyone, Tony Laporta with Flo and USAC Racing. Kind of just walking around the Corn Coast up here in Indiana, hashtag God's country, and stumbled upon this quaint little abode. Something about it gives me a funny feeling, so we're gonna we're gonna check out what's going on in here, okay? Let's see who's inside. Just let's see. Jerome, oh, what are you guys doing here? Jerome Rotella, what are you doing <laughs> what's here? What's happening, guys? Come on in. Okay. What do we got going on in here? This is our little house uh, out here in Indiana. Nothing special, our little kitchen. Yeah, I Have some, some cookies and bowl of cereal or something. Okay, yeah, know. nice healthy balanced meal. Yeah. I'm with you, you. okay. Kind of, so it's got a few bedrooms upstairs. Uh, it's kind of cool, kind of old school, most fancy thing is the flat screen. Yeah, we could sit here and watch the Golf Channel all day. Yeah. Um, come on, let me show you, show you where our uh, cars are kind of a crappy little shop, but... Uh, Modest. Yeah, I mean, it's it's okay, I guess. Right, okay, let's check it out. Holy <laughs> We didn't like just step into another dimension, did we? Kind of, kind of. Wow, this is still attached to the same house we yeah. were just in, right? Yeah, so a quick little story. So this is a high school gym. It's been restored. It had a high school, you know, all the classes and all that built on on the property. That went away a long time ago, and uh, Tom bought it and restored all of this. It's got heated floors and uh, basketball court. I mean, it's pretty deluxe. Yeah. So these are our cars, a um, couple dirt cars. We got a third one over there. Uh, they're King Chassis from New Zealand. Oh, wow. Uh, with Ed Pink Toyotas. Okay. Um, the thing about me is I hate being the same as everybody else. And is that why your name is Jerome? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, okay, we ain't gonna go into that story, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I just, I like being unique, and why, how else to do that, you know, having a one-off car, you know, from the other side of the planet, you know, but. What's the turnover rate for, for your guys' midget chassis? I mean, if they're coming from New Zealand, are you going through a chassis every year? Are you going through a chassis every six months? No, this one's the oldest we have. It's probably uh, five years old, maybe. The engine package, we're the only ones running a Ed Pink Toyota. Okay. Um, kind of a cool fun fact, in the history of the Toyota Midget engine, I'm the longest consecutive operator. Of wow. One. Since the beginning, I've ran one since 2006. Wow. Um, till now, so, so that's cool to be part of that. They could, they could give two shits about me. So you just knew something that nobody else knew before they all knew it. <laughs> I think it was 2006, I was driving for Cruz Pedregon on it and I won the championship, but backed up a year at the end of the, at the end of the year at Ventura, all the TRD guys were there. They were having, you know, shirts tucked in, the TRD shirts. Um, <laughs> And I had quick time, won the heat and won the main. And, oh man, who's this guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and they invited me to go to TRD that week, you okay. know, to check out their stuff. It was all new, it was all fresh. Um, so that was kind of the, my foot in the door. And then Cruz, I get a call from Cruz and he wanted me to drive his car the following year. So, um, I ended up driving, and then we incorporated incorporated the the Toyota deal into his midget program, and then the, eventually he ended up with the funny car deal through Toyota. Wow! Um, How do you get hooked up with Tom Malloy? I mean, because as you and I were talking about at Tulsa a few weeks ago, Tom's dad fielded Indy car teams at the Indianapolis 500, and you guys today, the body works not on these, but you guys today still run the Tom Malloy special logo on Logan's number 25. How did you get hooked up with Tom? So it was a couple years before I broke my back. I was just this young kid wanting to race. That was my passion. I had a day job. Um, every bit of my earning went to my racing. Right. You know, I didn't have sponsors. I didn't have shit. You know, and and um, I think it was Wally Pankratz. He was buddies with Tom. He's like, hey, you know, Tom will help you out. You know, go sit down and see what you could do. You know, and. Um, Steve Lewis was part of that. He was, I've been very close with Steve over the years and he kind of coached me, okay, you wear khaki pants, you tuck your shirt in, you have your little notebook, um, 
And, you know, so I showed up there and, and the rest is history. You know, he's been helping me since way back then. And um, uh, just a couple years ago, he wanted to own the stuff. You know, up until then, it was kind of my cars with his engines. We'd hired drivers, blah, blah, blah. But this is fully his po program. You know, he went... He went deep into this, you know. To, yeah, to he owns it. the building we're in yeah, right now. Yeah, he owns this property. There's a house next door. He owns that too. Um, but he just, he wanted to do it. His pat. So when we're down in Florida, it was his birthday, that okay. practice night. He showed up on the practice. He's 83. Um, and we're there practicing and he's responding all these people that are calling him and, and all the stuff that he's got going on, on in his life. And you know bad it's his birthday he told chris and i and logan he's like there's no place on this planet i'd rather be than wow. right here at this track wow and so that's that's the passion that fuels us mm -hmm. you know and um it's pretty it's it's pretty cool our, our system is pretty pretty unique it's not like everybody else's like i said we don't have fancy floor mats with our names on them and the little curtains under our benches and yeah um, the trailer fancy itself trailer, is. You know, our, I mean, we got to get up inside of our. You trailer need a ladder to get into your own stool. trailer. You know, it's got shellac floors and walls. I mean, it's, but it works. And I, I promise you, these are probably the best race cars at the track, and um, it's just. Well, we saw that at Tulsa on Saturday night for that seven thousand and one dollar purse. Logan was running away with it. Yeah. I mean, he really was in a class of his own, which I think speaks to Logan as a driver a fellow California kid, yeah. but also, I mean, you got to prep these cars incredibly well to go out there and run with the likes of the NOS Energy Drink National Midget Field. Yeah, it's a, it's a small, it's, it's tough, and it's eye-opening of how hard everybody works, mm -hmm. you know, all the different teams, and there's a lot of work and prep that has to go on, and day-to-day and -day stuff. Um, a, a cool quote I heard one time, it's, we're a small team doing big things in Indiana, yeah. you know, from California. And so, I don't know, we're just, it's just Chris and I. I'm turning, I'm turning 40 on Sunday, and it's, it's, it's some ball busting work. Maybe, you don't look, you don't look a day over 39. I know, I think the beard is making me look older than like 25 or something. Maybe. Uh, I like the highlights in your hair though. Yes, <laughs> don't, don't get started on that. <laughs> That's a, that's There's a, a lot you don't want to that, get started on for some reason. That, that's a sore subject. You don't want to go there. Okay, but, copy that. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, Chris and I are, it's just, yeah, we're, we're doing, it's doing our it, passion. Doing it for the love of it. It's not what we do for a living, which is good, because I think if we did this for a living, we'd hate it. Yeah, no doubt. I know a lot of guys that work back here full time and come race day, they're burned, burned the hell out. They're. Yeah. They don't even want to be at the track because yeah. it, all it is is a paycheck, you know. But for Chris and I, it's our passion, you yeah. know. And, and um, come race day, it's like, man, we're fired up. We want to go do it. We want to go. And just like, just like Jerome, you're, you're, you don't live here in Indiana. You're flying back and forth. Oh, yeah. No, it's because I got a full-time job in Van Nuys. I mean, I, I live in Ventura, California, and I commute 58 miles down the road to Van Nuys, California to work at Ed Pink Racing Engines. But that is a historic place that I got an opportunity to be in that came back into midget racing. You know, before last year, Ed Pink Racing Engines hasn't won a national midget race since 2007, you know. But then Ed Pink, Ed Pink Racing Engines, I got into the racing in 1994, went to my first sprint car race that I could really remember, you know. Been to some TQ races before that, but just a little kid eating dirt and playing with the cars in the mud. Yeah. But 1994 was the year that Ed Pink Racing Engines started out with Steve Lewis. They were building the Gerties. I mean, so all through my life, I've seen this iconic company go through this and go through all these steps and build all these engines. And then finally I get hooked up with somebody that builds some real nice cars and we're able to come race with the stuff we saw as kids. So something I learned about you in Tulsa was you're not just a dirt oval guy. You have a real passion for road course racing. Yeah, the, that's kind of where I came from. Um, I started racing go-karts when I was nine years old for like a year or two. I, we didn't have no money, typical, you know, deal like that. And um, I stopped and went straight up into midgets, nothing in between. And, and, but my family has always had 
Porsche race cars, 962s, 935s, and so I've been going to races and, and been part of that for many, many years and got to be part of their teams at big names, John Paul Jr. and, and all these um, famous road racers. Mm -hmm. you know, I got to meet all of them and, and it's pretty cool to, to have that sort of background and that yeah. history, you know, but um, the pavement car, that's, that's, that's my passion. I mean, dirt, don't get me wrong, it's badass, but pavement is probably where my passion lies. And um, Did you even, so, have a, you even have a friendship going back to California with Porsche factory driver for a long time, Patrick Long? Yeah, yeah, we grew up, we grew up racing go-karts. Um, and people in the dirt world probably don't know that name, don't care about that name. But Patrick Long, I think you and I would agree, was like Captain America as far as sports car racing goes. Yeah. He was a California raised kid and Porsche saw him and they picked him up and man, he became a superstar yeah. in the global road course racing world. But you and him, you just, you go way back like Cadillac seats. Yeah, I mean, we're buddies and, and <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was good. Took I was me waiting, a while to figure that out. They like, go what? way back like Cadillac seats. Yeah. Spridge, Spridge didn't get it, <laughs> it you got way it. Way over his head. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Um, so we, yeah, we split off and he went to Europe, did that whole deal. I went dirt track racing. And the funny thing is like, there's a vintage race at Monterey, the historics, mm -hmm. and we were both racing like, uh, in the same run group in 935s and um, whatever pass we had, we came back together and he won the race and I finished second. But um, it, was, it, was just, it was just cool, you know, on the little, podium thing they give you wine and cheese and your little ribbon and all that yeah, you just know like, I, just like Kokomo. I had i had my cheap you know simpson suit i had raced at ventura the With last race or something and i had dirt cut. i had dirt still on my boot my sh driving shoes and i think rob walton was third he there's a big you know they own that little store walmart um, <laughs> and so he uh, i've heard of it i made a joke over the mic like I don't belong up here with these pros, you know, I'm just some dirt track driver, you know, and, yeah. and they are all laughing. Uh, so it's, I don't know, it's just different worlds, but yeah. um, Very it's different. funny how they come together. And Well, hey, I really appreciate you showing us around. I had no idea what to expect when Spridge brought us out here, but this place is so cool. You guys have such a great operation. Tom Malloy obviously gives you guys a pretty cool playground to play on, I guess. Yeah, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, there's times I've texted him after a race and I've thanked him for letting him, letting us do what we love to do. Yeah. You know, it's not just a job. It's, it's like I said earlier, it's our passion, you know, and, and he's like-minded and, and we're, we're rocking with this thing, you know, and, um, I don't know, it's pretty cool. Well, we got a long season ahead of us. Uh, a lot of people are gonna learn a lot more about Tom Malloy Racing and you and Chris and CV thanks to this. In the winter time, we'll come back to shoot a remake of Hoosiers. You cool with that? I'm down. Okay, well, dude, thanks for showing us around. Love the place and can't wait to see the track. All right, guys, thanks for coming by.